Can you go lay anywhere else? Anywhere else in the entire house? Hi. I have four days before I have to go back to work, so I'm starting a new project. Not too long ago, I attempted to sew a garment or two for the first time in um, possibly years. And I made some circle skirts without using a pattern or anything because that's pretty easy when you're making circle skirts. Now it's time for the follow-up to that. This is very much the training stage. So my next goal is still skirts because <laughs> skirts are the easiest thing to sew. Let's face it, they are circles of fabric. I wanted to see if I could do different styles of skirts without a pattern. Making a circle skirt without a pattern is pretty basic. Like the, the calculator to make a circle skirt is out there on the internet in a million places. Other kinds of skirts, well, they're still pretty easy, at least I assume. But you know, it's more common to get a pattern and follow a pattern to do them. And I was like, eh, no, not about that because I'm a cheapskate and patterns are kind of ridiculously expensive. I shouldn't say that, I'm sure that with all of the work that goes into creating a pattern, they are well worth whatever they cost. Although one could argue that the fact that they're almost always 50% off means that maybe they're not. Also, I'm, I'm kind of stubborn about following directions. I think I remember things better and I feel like I've actually learned something more when I had to figure it out step by step by myself rather than just reading a list of instructions and doing as I'm told. That is why I'm kind of obsessed with this whole let's try to make something without patterns and circle skirt being the step one easiest thing I could think of. Step two is panel skirts. I have three different ideas for skirts to try. That'll basically give me three different techniques within this. But here's basically what I want to try out. My first one and the top priority is an ungathered panel skirt. Pretty basic. The second skirt that I want to try out is a gathered panel skirt. You can kind of cut out an infinite number of panels and then gather them all up to the size of your waist and you're going to end up with a much fuller skirt overall. Then the third one that I'd like to try out, and this is really just more of a whim so I may not do this, but it would basically be a gusseted panel skirt. A gusset is when you add like a triangle of fabric in between two other pieces of fabric. So those are the three ideas and basically for the non-gathered, a little something extra I want to do with this one is add some creative pockets. Rather than putting pockets on the sides, I want to do pockets that are actually like here. So your hands can go in like so. The two panels with the pockets in them would be one long piece that gets folded up to create that pocket. Roughly, this is the shape that I would be cutting out. So this is actually the top of the pocket that folds up to right here. And also for a little bit of extra fun on this one, I want to add some embroidery. For the gathered one, I have no ideas. Gusseted skirts like this, I'm pretty sure I had one when I was a kid. They're not really in style anymore, but it's like a fun thing that I'd like to try out. That's the plan. I have made another two trips to Goodwill since my last video, so I'm really stockpiling this super cheap fabric. My last haul was so good, 20 bucks for so much fabric, like so much. I have like six, five or six of these curtains, I think. I don't know, maybe it's only four. I have a lot. It's not a great color, but it is like a nice thick, heavy fabric and it's really soft and I like the feel of it. So I thought this would be great for the non-gathered paneled skirt. For the gathered skirt, eh, I'm not really sure. So I have three basic like cotton, cotton poly blends here. So I could use any of those. And then I also have this massive gray duvet cover that actually has like a really nice linen weave to it. Linen isn't a weave, it's a whatever. So I might just make the gathered skirt in this gray because I have a crap ton of it. So I could make it a really full skirt. I could even do like a floor length skirt if I wanted to. These are also good options for the gusseted skirt. Basically these two here, I think these complement each other decently. I also did not really plan ahead for this project whatsoever. So I don't have any of the proper colors of zippers, thread, like nothing. I have, I have nothing yet. So I'm gonna have to run out later today to get everything that I need. I think it would be a good idea to get butcher paper and actually make a pattern of my own. That being said, I am running out of room in this apartment for large items like that. 
So the first thing that I have to do is take some measurements, my waist measurement for every skirt, and then I need the length measurement that I would want each skirt to be. And that's about it. So if my waist is 32 and I want this skirt to be as full as possible, five inches at the top, that's with the seam allowance, needs to go down to four. And then just to make it easy, 15 inches on the bottom. Technically it's 14 because seam allowance. And then this one I think I'll do below the knee. You know what I could do to save myself having to hem this skirt? I could just use the hem that already exists here. We'll see. So this is the shape that I currently have. You know, there's lots of pins there and this is nasty. That seems like it should be like mid, mid knee to below the knee without any. Are you getting nastiness all over my fabric? Why? Your spooty butt is in my way again. Can you keep your nasty ass toys off of my fabric? The basic idea that I have should work, but I need some more tools before I can do this. I need a straight edge. I need some Taylor's chalk. Butcher paper would be super helpful. I'm gonna pause here, go to the store, get everything that I need. Then I'll come back and give this another go. <laughs> Okay, so it's the next day. Yesterday did not go quite as planned, which is fine. It's also been raining for like two weeks in LA and it's very dark. I'll fix it. Good heavens. So much better. So to quickly run through what I did yesterday, I went out shopping to get everything that I needed. I found pretty much everything, but I was looking for the butcher paper to see if I could find a smaller roll and I really didn't find any at all. Granted, I didn't look that hard because I ran into a roll of bulletin paper, which was significantly smaller than a giant roll of butcher paper. And I'm pretty sure it's like, it's just the exact same thing. It's just a nice kind of thick paper. So I laid that out and then drew on the pattern pieces that I wanted. Probably should have done that on a hard surface, but honestly, we don't really have a hard surface that is big enough for me to use. Of course, the puppy had to gallop over it as soon as I laid it on the ground. But for now, I basically drew out the main panel pattern, which should work for both skirt one and skirt three if I end up doing it. And then I had to figure out the pocket panels for skirt one. Then it was just time to cut everything out. First my patterns and then the fabric. So basically I have nine panels, each five inches at the top and 15 inches at the bottom. This should allow for a half inch seam allowance on every single panel, making it four inches on top and therefore nine times four being 36. I want this to sit low on my waist. So my waist measurement is 32, but I want a pretty big waistband on this skirt. So the actual start of the skirt will be sitting much lower. This fabric is also clearly pretty cheap and it's shedding like crazy, which I, I anticipate being a problem, <laughs> but I guess we'll see. I cut out a waistband 38 inches long just to be safe. And then I pinned that on and stuff got weird because again, I did nine panels, five inches each on top, half an inch of seam allowance on both sides. So we should lose an inch off of every panel, making it four inches on top. It should be 36 inches in the end. And yet my 38 inch waistband was like two inches too short when I pinned it around the top of the skirt. I mean, that implies that somehow nine panels turned into a 40 inch waistband. My math seems right to me, but something somewhere is not lining up. I'm not gonna worry about it right now, again, because this fabric is shedding when I just breathe on it. I have a feeling I'm gonna need all of that extra material to 
put into the seam allowance, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to learn French seams, which I wasn't planning on doing anytime soon. It's on my list of things I was going to learn eventually, was not on my list of things I wanted to learn now. My next step is putting the embroidery underneath the pockets, which is a whole separate video of its own that I'm making, and I believe that video would already be out by now, so I'll link it. I'm back. And I have completely forgotten where I was and what I was doing, so gonna take me a minute to sort of jog the memory on all of that. I finished my two panels of cruel work. I think I'm basically ready to start sewing. Uh, so usually at this point I just leave my edges raw because like, do I really care that much? I don't. However, this fabric is shedding so easily. Ah, I really feel like I need to finish them. I get the concept of it. It shouldn't be that hard. Basically French seams is like, if you have the two edges here, you sew the fabric like this and then you fold it back like this. So now the edges are inside and then you sew it again and that's what folds open. I think that's gonna end up taking more seam allowance than what I was prepared for, but that should be okay because when I measured this last time, I had like an extra four inches after pinning it together. As usual, I'm stalling. I am already really excited to not be using this fabric anymore. Now we find out if this fabric absolutely sucks to sew on. Well, that's not a great sign. So we've got the seam sticking off the outside of the skirt here. So now the right sides are going together. Technically, I should be ironing this. I'm trying to decide if I want to. I mean, obviously I don't want to. That worked out really well. Nice clean seam on the front, nice clean seam on the back. I am realizing that there's going to be a bit of a problem <laughs> with the pre-hemmed ends here because that sticks down kind of past the hem and you can see it. So I'm gonna see if there's a way for me to do better at that as we move on to the other panels. Probably not. So yeah, now it's just rinse and repeat on the other um, nine panels. Did I make nine? Dude, I don't know, I've slept since then. it there? Thoughts. First of all, French seams, love them. Time consuming, yes, but not at all difficult. And the finish is just like so delightful on the inside. Thought number two, these pockets, amazing. I love how the embroidery looks. All around, this is grand. Also, my poor little sewing machine managed to sew all of this without messing up or going nuts, which is just like, ah. I was expecting complete disaster from the very first time it stepped onto there. And no, it plowed on through, bless it. On the more negative side, mistake number one in making this skirt was definitely using the already done hem. I kind of forgot that if you're not hemming the end yourself, you don't have that nice little fold over. So I have all of these edges that run all the way down to the end of the skirt. Because all of my triangle panels that I cut out were flat on the bottom, straight edged, you get this sort of hex, 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 hexagonal, hexagonal? It's nine sides, so that doesn't even apply. Whatever, you get a bunch of straight sides and these little points in between. What the crap? is up with this. Why does it look like this? I'm not sure. My best guess right now without thinking about it too much is that I just didn't have a perfectly straight line on the top of my pattern piece. Ultimately, these mistakes are all fixable, which is the kind of mistake that is great to make. The next thing I'm gonna do is try to get this all evened up, pin the waistband on here, but first I'm gonna pause and go make strawberry ice cream because my strawberries are going bad. So I'll come back to this.
Hi! It's done. Close up, it is, let's face it, hella wonky. The seams are pulled into weird sideways things. The whole thing is not even. Like if I put the pockets evenly in the front, the zipper is not directly in the center in the back. From a distance, pretty darn cute. Time for round two. I've learned some things. I'm gonna do a few things differently. I've decided to do the gusseted skirt next because I want to do another one that is not gathered and put the information that I got from doing this skirt to use. First things first, I'm gonna go change because this sweater is way too hot. It may still be January, but in California, winter is over. All right, I am back. It's been a while, much longer than just changing a sweater. That turned into taking the puppy to the park and then having to give him a bath. So now he's being a crazy boy and I'm gonna get back to work. So lesson one that I learned from skirt number one is that I should probably draw my patterns out on a hard surface. Luckily, the desk that floats between the bedroom and the living room is currently in the living room because I need it to put my sewing machine on. We're gonna try drawing the pattern on that hard surface and maybe the lines will actually be straight. So I'm basically gonna start over here because clearly my measurements for this weren't correct. Let's say I do eight panels. So if my waist is 34 inches, which is kind of my low waist, but it works. Then I'm dividing 34 by eight, four and a fourth, which is how big the top needs to be. Then I want a half inch seam allowance on each side. The next lesson that I learned is that you should put a curve in the bottom of your panel and one in the top as well. I think that's why I ended up with the wonky panel tops. I am gonna fold this in half before cutting it to make sure that my two sides are even because that's another big mistake I did on the first time. I guarantee you the two sides of my pattern were not symmetrical and that definitely threw some things off. Well, that's already crooked. Now that I have it folded in half, I'm going to redo all of my measurements. This pattern piece should now be symmetrical. Now I need the gusset, which is just a triangle. It needs to be 18 inches long. It needs to be 16 inches wide because I want it to be even with the other ones. I also need a pocket, but I'm not as picky about that. So I don't know, I'll probably just whip it up. Sure. We are all ready to cut out. I think I'm gonna use the purple fabric for the main panels of the skirt and then this green fabric for the gussets. I think these are both top sheets, probably like a king size bed. So there should be plenty of fabric in here. The second skirt is going pretty darn well. I got a couple of the panels sewn together the other day and then I wasn't feeling well, so I was gonna just give up and not work on it anymore. But I decided to power through and I actually managed to get all of the panels sewn together. Ha! <laughs> I ran into a few difficulties for sure on this one. It basically going around the gussets was the tough part here. If it was just straight panels, it would have been easy peasy lemon squeezy. The biggest issue that I ran into is the pockets. One thing that I had not considered in advance is that the size of my pocket opening is bigger than the length of the skirt between the waistband and the gusset. So in my head, I was like, okay, that just means that the pockets need to go along one side of the gusset. So the first one that I did, I did my best and it did not work. It ended up with the gusset being in the middle of the pocket. So basically closing it up yeah, I can't get my hand into it. I considered undoing it, but like, I kind of like leaving things that aren't 
correct or perfect in my projects because it shows how much I've learned. Also, I hate ripping out seams with a passion. When I got around to the other side and the other pocket, by that time it was like 10.30 at night. I had a headache. I did not expect to actually figure it out, but I did. I took my time. I drew it out on a piece of paper. So the pocket on this side is actually on one side of the gusset and I can get my whole hand into it. Next up, I'm going to get the waistband on here. It's definitely going to need something to support it. So I'll probably put felt inside again because I don't have the proper kind of interfacing, but that's what I did on one of my circle skirts that I made in the last skirt with no pattern video and it worked really well. And then it'll just be that good old zipper in the back. Oh, and hemming because on this one, I actually have to hem it. Also in good news, it looks like this one fits. We have about two inches of overlap there which is right-ish. It's a lot better than having a whole extra panel of space there. So my calculations were better this time. Yay! Skirt number two is done, huzzah. I tried ironing it as best as I could, but I have a small iron and a small ironing board and I kind of just eventually decided this purple fabric does not want to be ironed. So I gave up. It fits even better than the first one does. So yay, I'm getting better at this stuff. For the waistband, I actually doubled over a piece of felt. So there's two layers there, which makes it really bad. It looks like a little like quilt or something up here. The hemline was still a little strange. The gussets were all significantly shorter than the skirt itself. Not significantly, like half an inch. I think I may have just been attaching them too high. I don't really know. It worked out in the end. I managed to get an even hem on it, which is not easy to do when you don't have a dress form or a person to put it on. Let's move on to skirt number three, the final of this video. For the third skirt, I've decided to go with this fabric. I'm pretty sure it's a linen or possibly a linen cotton blend. I'm going to make myself a new panel pattern piece. The difference now is because this is going to be a gathered skirt. One, I don't have to make it nearly as much of a a triangle, it can almost be more of a rectangular pattern. I'll probably do it so that you need at least six panels in order to go around my waist, but then the more that you add, the more full it becomes. So it is back to pattern drafting time. So uh, now I got to clear off my table. I think what I'm going to do is eight inches at the top of my panel and about 12 inches at the bottom in order to give myself a full, like this could be a floor length skirt. It's gonna be 42 inches long.
So this one went a lot smoother. One, because I have learned numerous things from those two. And two, because it is simpler. It doesn't have anything happening down here. So it was basically just a lot of straight seams. Despite how simple that was, I did still manage to sew in two panels upside down. How did I not notice this? Because I wanted to do such a wide waistband. This is definitely the widest of the three. So what I ended up doing was putting in darts, I guess they would be, on both of the sides. So that was fun and it did end up working. When I put it on, it fits nice and snugly around my waist, conforms the whole way. So huzzah, this is the best I have ever sewn a zipper in. And by the best, I mean almost so good that it's bad. It's hard to pull the zipper up because I got so close to the edge and there's quite a lot of fabric, especially around the waistband area. <laughs> But it looks so good. Can you even see the zipper? I should iron this. Am I gonna? Debatable. Besides that, I just need to go through and hand sew down the inside of the zipper stuff and then I just have to hem it. That's it, I have completed my challenge. Three different types of panel skirts made without a pattern. I mean, I made a pattern, but you know, without purchasing a pattern. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. We went from like massively off even, pointy edged hem, not great over here, to really nice on this end. This one looks almost halfway to being professional. Not bad. Can we just talk about the fact that I bought this piece of fabric for 250 and I used less than half of it on this skirt, which means that this skirt cost me $1.25. If you are looking to make stuff for yourself, I highly recommend starting with skirts. They are just so easy and just give it a try. I'll put a little bit of information in the description as to like basically how to cut out the pattern itself. Thanks for coming with me on this sewing journey. I certainly hope that this inspires you to start your own sewing journey because as I have mentioned and as you can tell, I have no idea what I'm doing. But you buy cheap fabric and then you just experiment and you learn by doing. You can do it too, probably better than me. And I gotta stop because I will ramble forever if I don't stop myself. See y'all later.